I am with you always until the end of the world. Tonight we'll learn a little about Elijah. The story I'm about to narrate to you, it's taken from 1 Kings chapter 17. Elijah was a Tishbit. He came from a place called Tishbe in Gilead. One fine day, Elijah just boldly goes and he stands forth before the mighty king of Israel, King Ahab, and he boldly declares, as the Lord God lives, there will be no rain or dew all these years except by my word. Then after a few days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. The Lord said, leave this place and go and hide yourself in the Wadi Sherat. You will drink of the waters of the Wadi. And I've commanded the ravens there to feed you. So Elijah obeyed the Lord. He went and he lived in the Wadi Sherat. And the ravens they brought him bread and meat in the morning to eat and bread and meat in the evening to eat and he drank of the abundant waters of the wadi. But after a while, the waters of the wadi dried up because there was no rain. Once again, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. The Lord said, Go now and live in Zarephath, for I have commanded a widow to feed you there. So Elijah obeyed the Lord, and he went to Zarephath. There, at the very gates of the town, he saw a widow. She was busy collecting sticks from the ground. And Elijah said to her, Please, can you give me some water to drink? And she was just about to go to bring him some water when Elijah called out behind her and said, Also, can you get me some bread to eat? And at this, she turned and she very sadly looked at him and said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing cooked, for I... I only have this handful of flour and a little oil in a jug. And I was collecting these sticks so that I could bake a last meal for me and my son to partake of before we both die. And Elijah said, don't be afraid. Do as you have said, but first bake a cake and bring it and give it to me then make some for yourself and for your son. For thus says the Lord, 
the jar of flour will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain to the earth. So the widow did as Elijah told her. And she and Elijah and her son, they ate for many, many days. For indeed, the jar of flour was not emptied. And the jug of oil did not run dry according to the word of the Lord that was spoken through Elijah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, Elijah, he just suddenly, out of the blue, he appears for the very first time in the Bible in 1 Kings chapter 17, the story we just spoke about. No prior introduction is being given to this, to this prophet who happens to be one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. Elijah, he didn't come from a family of prophets. No, he was just a simple man. Nor is there any indication in the Bible to suggest that he had political or, or influential connections that would grant him an audience before the mighty king Ahab. No, he was a simple man. And yet, one day, this simple man goes boldly and he stands before the king of Israel, King Ahab, and he boldly declares that there will be no rain in the land. What do you think gave Elijah this, this confidence, this boldness, this authority? The answer is Elijah had received the word from God. Elijah had received a revelation from God. Elijah so boldly declared that there would be drought in the land because he had heard it from God himself and he believed what God told him. Do you know, each and every one of us present here, we all have received a very personal message from God. We all have received a revelation from the Lord. The revelation of the truth of salvation. If only we, like Elijah, were to boldly go forth and declare it to the people around us, we would see the miracle of new life, of conversion, every single day. Think about it. Let me tell you a true story. This is sometime in the 19th century. There was an American woman. Her name was Sybil. Sybil was one among the 14 people, the missionaries who first set foot on the islands of Hawaii. The minute Sybil stepped on the island, she was terrified by these naked and, and dirty savages who, who confronted her. These savages, they, they believed in, in idol worship, they believed in, in human sacrifice, and there was a priestess among them, and she used to urge the people to, to pray and to serve this god of the volcanoes, some god called Piri. And in spite of all these absurd ideologies that existed there, Sybil, she boldly professed Jesus to those people. And the priestess, she was listening attentively to every word that was being said. And she was touched. She accepted Jesus as her savior. And full of zeal for the Lord, you know what she did? She climbed the highest volcanic mountain. And in front of all her people, 
she began to hurl stones at this god Piri. And she also stepped right into a volcanic crater just to show to her people that, that all her beliefs about this god Piri was all wrong. That day, a number of people from Hawaii committed their life to Jesus Christ. And if we, just like Sybil, were to boldly declare, proclaim Jesus to the world around us, can you imagine the new lives, the conversions that we would see everywhere? Elijah, he, he risked his life. He risked his everything to do what Abba Lord told him to do. To stand before King Ahab and declare that there would be drought in the land. You know, King Ahab could have easily have Elijah thrown into, into prison or, or could even have had Elijah beheaded. But that didn't deter Elijah, no. He still very boldly, very fearlessly did what our father told him to do. How about us? Do we risk anything at all in serving our God? Do we go the, the extra yard in serving God? Do we stretch in out serving the Lord? You know, every year I, I go to Mumbai for a one month holiday. And out of that one month, I stay for seven days with my in-laws. My in-laws live in Navi Mumbai, very close to the Institute of Mother Teresa's Home for the Destitutes. And I remember two years ago when this institute had first been set up, I heard Jesus say to me very, very clearly, Mildred, go and cook for them. And I said, no, I won't do that. You know how hard I work in Dubai. I work like a donkey. There's no way you're gonna get me out of bed and there's no way you're gonna have me cook for those people. And Jesus was so patient, he didn't say a word. But I began to feel guilty about it. And so in the evening, I went to the institute. And right enough, there were 40 men there. And guess what? They had a problem. They didn't have a cook. And even though the confirmation of the message was, was so glaring in my face, I still argued with the Lord. I, I kind of reached some kind of consensus. I said, Lord, you give me five men and I'll have them cook under my instructions. <laughs> and the Lord agreed. And Mildred, who, who really struggles to cook a simple meal for herself and for her daughter, by God's grace, I was able to prepare meals for over 40 people, oh, all by the grace of God. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make here is that we all have a desire to work for God. We do. But only if that desire, that, that work, it fits very neatly into our work schedule, into our comfort zones. No, that's not the right attitude. Like Elijah, we must boldly and fearlessly outstretch and outserve the Lord. Further in the story, Abba Father says to Elijah, leave this place and go and hide yourself in the Wadi Sherit. You will drink of the waters of the wadi. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. And Elijah obeyed the Lord. 
Elijah's obedience to the Lord put him in a position to receive of God's supernatural supplies, supernatural abundance. Ravens feeding him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, what luxury. And he drank of the abundant waters of the wadi. Much abundance. And if we were to apply this in the context of our lives, it means that every time we obey the Lord, we put ourselves in a position to receive of God's supernatural supplies, abundant blessings. I'd like to tell you something about my mother here. My mother is just a simple school teacher. She used to teach in Sacred Heart High School, which is in, in one of the very poor sections of Mumbai. In fact, most of her students were, were people from the slums. And mommy had, had a desire in her heart. She could, she could feel the Lord asking her to coach and, and, and give tuitions to these students for free. <laughs> so she would teach them history and, and geography and French and English, all for free. And not only would she do that, she would then have them forwarded to my dad, who would teach them maths and, and algebra and geometry and all the sciences for free. And I remember as, as an immature teenager, I, I would always chide them. I'd say, nobody ever does anything for free. You've got to charge them. But my parents, in spite of that, that meager teacher's salary, you know, teachers don't earn much at all in Mumbai, and in spite of their very insignificant savings, they were able to give all three of us good education. And I can't recollect a single time of lack. There was always abundant food, warm shelter, good clothing, and lots and lots of love and joy. And I strongly believe my parents' obedience to the Lord put us all in a position to receive of God's supernatural supplies, supernatural blessings. Note very carefully, our father said to Elijah, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. I emphasize on the word there. There, in the context of this story, is the wadi of Sherith. And Elijah had to go there to the wadi of Sherith to partake of the Lord's supernatural supplies. Now, if we were to apply this in the context of our lives, do you know that there is a place called there in our lives too? A place that flows with milk and honey. A place that is full of God's abundant blessings. Our promised land. Just waiting for us to claim it. And the only ticket for us to, go, to get to that place there is our obedience to the Lord. To give you an example to, to help us better understand. You know, the, the fruits in a tree weighs in the wind and we don't like it. And so we lose out on God's supernatural supplies, on God's blessings. Once again, I want to say a little about my family. My, my brother, when he finished his medical exam and uh, he became a doctor, we just, the whole family, we just automatically presumed that, that he would want to set up a dispensary in Mumbai. 
and he would make lots of money and he would live happily ever after. And all our arrangements, all our planning, it was moving around the setup in Mumbai. But my brother, he somehow felt very uncomfortable about it. He felt that God was calling him to serve the poor. In some place there, he was not too sure. I remember when, when he first discussed this with my parents, they completely freaked out. But then they let him go his way. And my brother now, he's, he's working for a charitable hospital in, in Kerala. And, He sets up these um, mobile hospital camps and he moves from one rural village to another, remote villages. And he and his team of doctors, they attend to the poor people all for free. And he is blessed. He has a beautiful wife. He has a beautiful daughter. And he's very, very prosperous in the Lord and in his finances. He found his place there. What about us? We're thinking about it. After a while in the story, it says that, that the waters of the wadi dried up. And so Abba Lord said to Elijah, go now and stay in Zarephath, for I have, have ordered a widow to feed you there. Once again, the word there. And once again, Elijah obeyed the Lord. And as Elijah was on his way, just at the very entrance of the town, he, he saw this widow. She was busy collecting sticks. And Elijah said to her, please, can I have some water to drink? And she was just about to go and bring him some water when Elijah called behind her and said, can you also give me some bread to eat? And she looked at him very sadly and she said, I have nothing cooked. I only have this handful of flour and a little oil in a jar. And I was just about to cook my last meal before I and my son would die. And Elijah said, don't be afraid. Do as you have said, but first make a cake and give it to me, and then make some for yourself and for your son. And the widow agreed. She agreed with Elijah. This is one amazing woman. You know, she had so little, and even then, she was willing to share that little with Elijah. She was a giver, a cheerful giver. And no wonder Abelot selected her above all the other people of Zarephath to be blessed and helped in the time of drought. How about us? Do we give? Do we give cheerfully? Do we give for the Lord's work? I want to testify here. You know, uh, seven years ago when, when I had come to Dubai, I've told you this, I, I just had two bags with me. One bag full of my daughter's books and the other bag more with my daughter's clothes and very few of mine. And I had just a few pounds from the last job assignment I had in the UK. And I was clinging on to those pounds it was like a security, something to take me through the three months that I was going to try to buy out. And even though I didn't know Jesus so well at that time, I heard my heart say to me so clearly, give it away. And it didn't make sense. That was my security. That was all that I had. But I heard it again very clearly give it away. 
So I gave it away. And I gave it with a cheerful heart. And I tell you, within one month of giving that away, I got a job. And today, by God's grace, I am rich in the Lord. Our Lord Jesus says, give, and it will be given right back to you. A good measure will be pressed down, shaken over, poured into your lap more than you can hold. And the story, it happily ends with saying that the widow and Elijah and her son, they ate for many, many days because the jar of flour was not emptied and the jug of oil did not run dry according to the word of the Lord. Now note here, the flour and the oil, it did not multiply all at once to give her a three or a five month stock of food. No, it multiplied daily, just a little bit, to provide this lady the right amount to make some bread for Elijah, for herself, and for her son. This lady, in, in all faith, every day she would go to her kitchen. She would open the cupboard and, and take out this huge jar of flour with just a little flour in it. And this huge jug with just a little oil in it. And in all faith, she would mix it up and make a cake first for Elijah and then for herself and for her son. She never worried about tomorrow's needs. She was happy that the day's needs were met. She was a woman of faith. How about us? Oh, we don't like having our needs met by the skin of our teeth. We pray to the Lord for financial blessings so that we can stack up our money for maybe a 10 or a 15 year retirement plan. And when we don't see that, we fret, we worry. Where is our faith? Where is our faith even when we say the Our Father, give us today our daily bread? Where is our faith even though Jesus taught us, do not worry about what you will eat, or what you will drink, or what you will wear. Is not your life more than your food? And your body more than your clothing? That's all. Praise be to God. Amen.